Caravaggio is, well, uh, let's call him an interesting character. He had an outspoken disdain for the classical masters, which drew bitter criticism. For example, here I'm comparing him to Titian, the Venetian master. Now, in this case, what we're looking at is a depiction of David and Goliath in both cases. In Titian's case, Goliath is muscle-bound, but he's also fairly clean. We don't get a lot of blood and gore and everything else. Even the decapitation is fairly minimalistically painted, whereas in Caravaggio's case, we have a young man who is not muscle-bound. He's not a perfect specimen. He looks like, well, an average person. And the head of Goliath is dripping blood, probably more realistic, but it lacks that cleanliness that we tend to see from the Renaissance masters. He also eliminates a lot of background and color. He creates this very vivid juxtaposition of light and shadow, creating a great deal of drama in his pieces, but eliminating some realism in the process. Obviously, most of the time, things don't happen in the middle of a moonless night. Now, Caravaggio has a rather tricky life, a rather troubled life. He will kill a man in about 1606. It is rumored that he kills the man because he is also a suitor to the same prostitute that Caravaggio is trying to marry. Then he goes off to Naples and to try and stay out of trouble, he goes to a restaurant, he orders poached artichokes in butter and white wine, and then the waiter brings them and Caravaggio says which are which and the waiter smarts off to him and consequently gets nearly beaten to death with a poached artichoke which takes a little bit of effort okay it may have may have been the platter but the image of some someone trying to beat another person to death with a poached artichoke is rather entertaining now Caravaggio is known for reducing classic and catholic narratives to nothing more than human drama here we see the death of the Virgin, and what we see is not this cleaned up, pristine image of the Virgin Mary. Rather, what we see is, well, from her abdomen, a bloated body, the, a cadaver, a, a figure who could be anyone who's just died on the street and being depicted that way. Only the mourners set her off, that and the very minimalistic halo that Caravaggio is using. But this has power. It draws people in. It makes people aware of what's going on and it makes them part of the scene because they can see it themselves. They're familiar with these images. They're not familiar with the cleaned up Disney sort of version that we see in the Renaissance. His figures tend to be familiar and spoke to the viewers because he did not idealize them, but rather used models plucked or at random from the streets and the countryside of Italy itself. So these are all relatable figures that he's working with. This could be your neighbor or your butcher. Now, he will be known for a specific form. He will be known for using tenebrism. And this is also called dramatic illumination. It's a very Baroque idea, this idea of dramatic or theatrical illumination. And it's a style of painting using pronounced chiaroscuro with violent contrasts of light and dark, darkness being the dominant feature. Now, some of these artists, including Caravaggio, may have actually started with a dark canvas and worked towards the light, really the opposite of what a lot of artists do, especially during the Renaissance. But it creates a very unified image, and it creates a very dramatic one. It's very reminiscent of a stage set or something that we would expect in a Broadway musical today. 